Sorry about that, folks. Cool. But we're back in action now. Thanks for bearing with us. Um, you know, you know what I need after all that a, hassle a, with the audio. A good beer. A beer would yeah, be nice. Absolutely. Uh, what do you beer What do you got has, today, Paul? This beer has tin foil on it. There you go. Um, this is the beer that you brought to me. Yeah, so I don't know why I'm asking you. You have I'll a short you, you have a short memory span. <laughs> uh, this is from Great Divide Brewery, or Great Divide Brewing Company. This is a chocolate oak aged Yeti, mm. which is an imperial stout. Yeah. And, uh, I've had the Yeti before, but not the chocolate oak, oak yeah, aged one. Stout so. aged on oak chips with cocoa nibs and spice added. Delicious. It sounds like a, like a, a cake or something. Delicious. So um, I kind of, uh, as you guys know, me and Paul, we like to pregame. So I was pregaming with uh, with some uh, self righteous uh, ale, or I'm sorry, self righteous black IPA from Stone. This stuff is amazing. I remember the first time I had this like four four years ago, and I just it blew my mind. Um, they discontinued it for a while and they brought it back. So I'm having some of that to start off with. And I'm going to be moving on to this Cherny. Cherny? Cherny? This is inky. Oh, my God. Cherny Medved. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. You'll like it. You'll like it. But um, look, there's a Russian bear on it. It's a bear. I really a, like the bear. A Russian hat. It's what do you call those hats? Uh, those Russian hats. I don't hats. know. I don't know. It's a, there's the, a name for the it. The hat with the ear flaps. Uh, the, the, uh, You're right. I don't know what it's called. Maybe somebody in... It was Johnny Appleseed, yeah. Davy Crockett hats from Russia. Uh, but anyway, it's a Russian Imperial Stout with cherries, vanilla, and oak. Manic Geek, if you're watching this, uh, you've probably either tried this because you're a beer aficionado or, you have, uh, or you're incredibly jealous because it sounds delicious. I've never had it before, but it was on, wasn't until I bought it at the store today that I realized it's 13% alcohol. So I might, I might be crashing at your house tonight, Paul. Yeah, Kyle, you might hang out for a while. Just a bit. After we're... Uh... Hope you're cool with that. After we're through with the show. No, that's fine. You're cool with sleepovers, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you got a big enough bed. Cozy up. Yep. Okay. And on with the show. Things right. are things are proceeding very smoothly so far today. So we talked about um, buying mugs and glass glassware at we did. Uh, paulshardware.net. We did mention that. Do that. I mean, the, they're, they're really high quality glasses and um, they promote drinking, so I'm all for that. <laughs> Uh, also, I'm still selling shirts at my store, awesomesaucenetwork.com. We didn't show store. Your, your store yet. Here it is. You can buy an Awesome Sauce shirt uh, with my logo or some other cool designs, some funny phrases on there that I'm, I really like. I'm, I'm wearing the uh, or CP, the aggressive CPU cooler yes. shirt. Aggressive. I like that so, word. So it sounds much better so than rapey. Uh, so yeah, go that ahead. These are available. back in stock, by the way. I think I'm sold out now in 4X and 5X. So sorry for the larger sizes out there, but I still have a few smalls and mediums and larges left. So if you guys are those sizes, get them quick before they sell out. I don't know when I'm going to be restocking. So uh, just just a note there. I have Anything some else? I have some new shirts coming. You do uh, working on the design. Actually, I was going back and forth a little bit with John today. Um, if you guys haven't seen my new logo on my channel page, actually, you should um, show it in that glass. It's it'll show up better. Yeah, it's it's got it's got. So this is my my thumb screw logo. And I've integrated that with my main logo, and I'm I'm gonna do a shirt with just the thumb screw on it. I think that's a good call. A few people have asked for that. You so were showing me mock-ups earlier today. They look pretty nice. Yeah, so I'm excited about that. I'll let you guys know, of course, once those are available. And then um, my other announcement is that I'm going to Pax Prime. Yeah, Pax nice. Prime. I'm a little jelly. I'm. That's it. Well, you're gonna be in getting married. Getting married. Well, you'll be <laughs> married before that. That's true. But then we'll be like on the, your honeymoon or something. The pre honeymoon. The pre honeymoon? Yeah. You have a pre honeymoon? Yeah. You know, what? like the honeymoon you take before your actual foreplay? No, that happens what? at the actual honeymoon. Okay. Ball. Come on. Oh. Um, no, we, well, we're going to Thailand for our actual honeymoon. Um, but the weather in Thailand is horrible around the time we're getting married, so we're actually waiting a couple months after we get married to okay. go. So we're, but we still want to relax and kind of unwind after the hectic wedding and stuff. So we're going to be taking a, a smaller local trip, maybe to like oh. Palm Springs or something like that. Well, that that will be nice. Yeah. By the way, we never did a cheers to start the show off, yes. so you can finish yours. <laughs> yes, I will. It's no, I'm. You're supposed to cheers and then you mm. drink, or you wanted to pour. The beer's just so good. Yeah, or let me pour can, it. Let me pour it. We're all we're doing everything. I have to give you a proper cheers. I can't everything do it out of order today. Yeah, that's right. All right, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yes, we've got some interesting articles today. There wasn't huge news this week, uh, as Paul and I were saying. It's kind of died down since uh, Computex and E3. Yep, kind of leveled out. Um, so there isn't as much exciting stuff, but there is some stuff still worth talking about. And there's I'd some say. stuff coming soon. Yes, there so, is. So uh, for Cal's half of the show, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, some hot and heavy hardware, of course. That's right. Uh, some of that stuff. We're going to be doing some face-off. 
Yes, we um, are. We have an interesting uh, punishment for the loser of Face Off this round. It's a new one. You'll there, like it. There's a Pimp My PC, of course, the mm -hmm. classic. As always. Uh, and then we'll be finishing off with tech news before we move on to my half of the show. That's right. I just outlined your half of the show for you, Kyle. Thank you very much. Right. I will do. I will uh, show you the same courtesy on your half of the show. Beautiful. Uh, so before we head on into hot and heavy hardware, cheers. Oh, yeah, cheers. To the show, to all of you for thanks watching. To, thanks to you guys for being here. Thank you, guys. Mm-hmm. That is delicious. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. It's very... Mm. Mm. You can taste those oak chips. Mm. Oak taste the cherry. Yeah. And mm, that's a new one. Damned English oak. All right. So, hot and heavy hardware. What do we have today? Uh, um, I picked out a few things. Do we have uh, lower thirds? Oh, do we? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if it happens, I did not set up any... Oh, we do. Hot and yeah, heavy hardware. Yeah, there we oh, go. Oh, yeah. We got the hot and we got the heavy. So the... Power supplies. Have, I, I, yeah, get, I, get, yeah, I get you. I get you. So much thought went yeah. and, and, and time and effort went into these. So much R and D. So let's talk about this monitor. So we got a monitor here. It's the Acer, and I hate Acer for doing this. They have great monitors. They've really stepped up their game when it comes to monitor development. I have to give them that. But what they're still lacking on is the marketing aspect. No, dude, this is Leet Speak right here. That is not. What is that Leet Speak it's, for? It's the, the Acer Extrithic. No, it's the Krilk. Krilk? If it was lead, lead speak, it'd be the, the Krilk. Well, that would be an A L C K. Yeah, Krilk. Or Krilk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah? Right. Krilk. That's, you know what? That's actually an easier way to remember it. The Krilk. And then you're like, well, that's clearly XR341CK. Mm -hmm. right. Anyway. So the Krilk 34 inch, it's curved yes, it QHD. Is. It's and, sexy. And FreeSync. 21 by 9, ultra wide, quad HD, 3440 by 1440, which okay. is an optimal. It's, it's a pretty nice resolution if you're doing a lot of pr productivity or you just want to do some games that are a bit more immersive and have that wider screen. Um, IPS, very cool. They've already had one very similar to this that supported G. Excuse me, this beer. Mm. G Sync. Woo! -hoo. G Sync. Uh, this is the FreeSync version. Um, okay. And we're gonna get into the, the free sync aspect in a little bit, but it's uh, it's running at 75 hertz, which I think is a nice boost from the 60 hertz. Although, um, you know, obviously if you're playing just straight up at 4K, you're not mm. gonna be able to do 60 uh, past 60 hertz uh, with the Display Port. But you've got HDMI 2.0, Display Port, Mini Display Port, and a USB 3 hub. So there's a lot of connectivity options. This uh, pretty much rivals. The um, the new ASUS ROG is there an ROG monitor that they were showing off at Computex that uh, had yeah. the crazy like industrial stand. Yeah, they were. Sh I didn't get a very close look at that one actually. Okay. I I kind of I kind of skipped over that. But I mean, um, it's kind of reminiscent of it. But yeah, right? yeah, very very similar. Yeah. And uh, it says it's going to be a little over a thousand dollars or eleven $1 hundred yes. MSRP. Right. And um, but that is two hundred dollars cheaper than the G Sync. Yep. version of this right. so and i think is that because g-sync is typically cheaper to license from these manufacturers like acer than FreeSync is like G well, it's nvidia that's charging more for, so for g-sync g-sync has a actual piece of hardware an actual chip that has right. to go onto the monitor right. so uh, nvidia charges for that and, and i believe they charge some licensing as well uh, for g-sync <laughs> so that adds to some of the cost right um also, I mean, I don't know if G-Sync is still positioned as like the premium. Um, I mean, there've been comparisons back and forth, but you know, there are some things, there are some areas still where G-Sync has a leg up on FreeSync, especially when you're talking about lower frame rates, because that's one thing that the G-Sync chip actually does, is it does frame doubling once you get down below, say like 30 hertz, or I, I think below 30 hertz, right. it'll double up the frames, whereas FreeSync monitors, um, they, they, they don't really have a, an accommodation for that, and you can get yeah. Uh, actual flickering and stuff if your frame rate gets too low. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that is a trade off, but I mean, 200 bucks is a pretty significant price difference. It is. Um, it is. And I, I've, I haven't personally tested like an A B comparison between FreeSync and G Sync, so I can't tell, you know, if the, the, the uh, G Sync double frame rate, mm. how it compares to the flicker technology you on, should, on FreeSync. You should go to the event at the New Newegg Hybrid Center. Oh, are they having one? They are for, for G Sync and FreeSync. They're having. Oh, uh, they're collaborating with Tom's Hardware, I think, and they're doing a FreeSync oh, nice. versus G Sync, so you can go and do like oh. a blind taste test, and like you get your experience and everything. A sight test. I'm I'm not sure if I'm going to be going by there or that not. That sounds pretty I, cool. I only just heard about it today, actually. Nice. Um, well, that'd be a good uh, I think good source of info. I think it's a couple weeks out. So I think it's in mid July. Okay, good to know. But good to I know. don't know the date for sure. Okay. But, but as far as like, yeah, I mean, let us know what you guys think in the chat. FreeSync versus G Sync. 
for those of you who have personal experience with both uh, technologies, let us know which one's better. And you know, from what Paul was saying, like, like there's a little bit more technology built into G-Sync as of now, but for a higher premium. Yeah. And for those of you who have experienced both, let us know in chat, do you think it's worth it? Because I'm curious myself, because I know you and I eventually, that's, that's where we're headed right now. Eventually, you and I yeah. are going to pick up either a FreeSync or G-Sync monitor for our custom water cool builds that we have coming up. Yes. Um, so let us know in chat, because I'm curious myself uh, about those A-B comparisons between the two technologies. But uh, apart from that, it's, it's a pretty bitchin' monitor uh, for what it is. Four millisecond response time, not too bad for IPS, and 100% uh, sRGB color reproduction. So you, oh, get, you definitely get nice. that benefit over TM panels uh, because it's an IPS panel. Um, also, it, oh, IPS. I, didn't, I actually had not even really meant or noticed that when you yeah, first started talking. Yeah, it's, it's IPS, which is like honestly, IPS is a requirement for me now. If I'm gaming yeah. or editing, especially editing, I mean, I, I want a monitor that's not just good for. It's like a computer. A monitor these days, it has to be good for everything, yeah. not just one thing. So if I'm going to get a monitor, it's got to be good for gaming, editing, web browsing, you know, photo editing, all that kind of thing. And I think IPS is the way to go on that. Just the truer color spectrum, the wider color spectrum that you get with that, especially with 100% sRGB, I mean, that's pretty fantastic and almost essential nowadays for, for I don't know, professional. I shouldn't say that we're professional, but for, for, for prosumer grade yeah. content creation. I, I will say, yeah. especially if you're doing, um, if you're like when I was working on my logo and stuff like that, and doing gradients and that yes. kind of thing, like having yes. the color depth is is Absolutely. really key for that kind of thing. Of course, then you see stuff and you like show it to somebody else and they're like, "What are you? I'm looking at nothing here." And yeah, like it's got this really subtle gradient right there. Like I don't see it. You're probably looking at a TN right. six bit panel or something. Exactly. Quick aside here, just because I've noticed this, uh -huh. is that you're doing the same thing with your wedding ring that I that I do. <laughs> yeah, I don't even notice I'm doing it's, it too. It's totally, it, you don't subconscious. even, yeah. It's you, a subconscious just, like, thing. Sit there and, anyway. It, it's, you know, it probably it, stems back to something in childhood. Yes. You know what I mean? When I was we got married, too much attention. I don't know. When I was young, there's got to be a reason why I do this all the time. Um, but anyway, uh, it's a cool monitor. Go ahead and check it out. Let us know what you think in chat. Let's move on though, because we yes, got a lot of stuff to cover. We do. Uh, the Gigabyte GTX 960 is getting a makeover, and hey. it's getting micro sized. It's, it's getting, not super sized. It's getting micro sized. It's a little teeny tiny version. It's a little itty bitty card. Little uh, right it's being super compacted into this little package here. Uh, which only spans about, what are the measurements on this thing? It's just insane. 42 millimeters by 181 by 136. So for those of you that... <laughs> which is the length on that one? Yeah, exactly. So for those of you in the US where the metrics don't make sense, that's one and a half inches thick, obviously. Okay. Seven and 7.1 inches long. 7 .1. It's a seven inch card. All right, that's good. Pretty good. Uh, by five five 5.3 inches. Shorter than the Fury X. Tall. Yeah, exactly. Shorter than the Fury X, of course, not nearly as powerful, but uh, definitely will do good in some mini ITX systems, right? I mean, it's got they've got uh, three different flavors. Two, uh, they got two two gig models. Oh. One of them's a stock clock frequency. The other one's a factory overclock. They're using one. It looks like a single eight or ten millimeter heat pipe. Yeah, I would have things. to guess it's eight or ten because mm -hmm. one one heat pipe at six millimeter, I don't think would do the trick. Uh, especially because the fact that they're able to uh, factory overclock it and still get relatively good temps tells me that they've got a sizable cooler on there, which is the Windforce 2X. They also um, changed the display out they layout. Did. Yeah, you lose um, two display ports. You lose a couple of display ports, but they've added, well, I mean, compared to their previous design, it, it's like you get less. That kind of sucks. You get less now. I was going to say they've, they've arranged it to like give you more DVI, which would make sense for a lower end card where you're probably dealing with people who might be working with older hardware. You get the same DVI though. That's what I'm saying, but this DVI uh -huh. layout on the bottom one here that Gigabyte right. did for their 960 was unique to theirs. The, oh, actu right. the actual layout for a, a 960 only has a single right. dual-link DVI. Yeah. So, anyway. But, you know, I mean, if you're, go if you're going 960, you're probably not connecting a crap ton of monitors anyway. Um, but who knows? Uh, apart from that, I think there are 75 millimeter fans on there. So they're tiny. I think the regular Windforce cards have 90 millimeter fans. Um, but you still get a single six pin PCIe mm -hmm. connector. So very power efficient. Uh, if you're looking for a small mini, mini ITX build, this might do it for you. Um, there, there was a lot of um, uh, the results, uh, the, the feedback on the uh, GTX 960 were very polarizing. A lot of people said, you know, it wasn't really what they expected. They expected a little bit more power out of it. 
and we're mm -hmm. hoping for a 960 Ti. Obviously, that didn't happen. Still waiting on the 960 Ti, actually. Yeah. Good yeah. question. Right. We've, we have a few more news bits, and well, at least I have a couple in, in my half of the show, but still nothing about the 960 Ti. Maybe yeah. they're saving that for a holiday launch. But you do have some other TI news on your half of the show. I that do. We will be talking about later, so stay nice tuned. Nice teaser. <clears throat> Aha. Aha. Totally plan that. All, All right, right, so moving on, we've got NVIDIA Quadro cards. Uh, still sticking with NVIDIA here. Uh, the, their M5000 and M4000 cards are slated to release August 9th. This or no? From, this is from Video Cards. August 9th. Dot com, video Cards. Way. And as most things on Video Cards.com go, uh, is rumor, speculation. Grain of so, salt. August 9th is well, they, kind of they an usually estimate. they usually list they usually flag their articles that are rumors. Yeah, they're very good about say, that. This is a rumor. But but in the article mm. they say it's rumored launch of August 9th because it's supposed mm. to co potentially coincide with uh, what is the name of the event that's uh, happening? The event that is happening. I've never been to it, but it happens every is year. Is it's like the, the, the Skrillex convention. Ah, uh, no. wait, no, I had this. I had this up here just you a had second. It too? It's, it's in Germany. SIGGRAPH. Sig oh, SIG oh, no, that's a different event. Okay. This is a different event. This is SIGGRAPH 2015. SIGGRAPH 2015. I've never been there. Yeah. It's in Germany, probably, so I'd love uh, to go. Game Gamescom is what is in Germany there from August 5th to 9th. Right. So, oh, um, oh, people are speculating that it's going to launch around the time of this event. It'd be a perfect time to release it for NVIDIA. Um, it's running the GM, both cards, the, both the M5000 and the 4000 are running the GM 204 GL GPU, which is Maxwell, which is a refreshing it's Maxwell, change. Maxwell, but it's also, the, it's also the, the smaller chip. So yes. this is the one that's equivalent to uh, like a 980. Yes, exactly. So I, okay, so now forgive me if this has already happened, but I don't follow the Quadro news quite as much, but I would be, of course, curious if there is a Titan version or GM mm. 200 variant. Yeah. Um, that's going to be a Quadro, probably M6000 or something like that. Right. Um, but that would probably bear some, like a bigger frame buffer too, I would guess. Yeah, yeah. Maybe more memory and all that good stuff. Yeah. Speaking of memory, how much do these ship with? Or does uh, it, do the, we have information again, yet? Again, rumored, uh, we're speculating, the article speculating 8 gigs. Okay. Which is a sizable amount. I think that's plenty for most <laughs> workstation applications. Mm -hmm. um, and again, guys, Quadro cards are not for gaming. They're for workstation applications with uh, multi-threaded you know, support and you know, I don't know, what, what kind of examples could you give? S things like uh, 3D modeling or 3D rendering, um, editing of course. Um, fluid dynamic simulation. Fluid dynamic simulation, a lot of stuff in the medical field as well uh, that can be applied um, and, and uh, can really take advantage of like OpenGL and stuff like that. Uh, so, good stuff. I don't want to spend too much time on it because I know a lot of you guys are more focused on the gaming stuff. Um, but let's move on to the uh, motherboard. So this motherboard has actually been out for a while now. As rock. But it's gotten a lot of attention, and Anantech just released a really <laughs> good review on it. If you're curious at all about this board, I suggest reading the review because it's very thorough, as is everything that Anantech does. Uh, they're super reputable that way. But it's the ASRock X99E ITX motherboard. It's the only mini ITX motherboard that supports Haswell E processors, DDR4 memory. Yep. Um, and I think like the... Even though you can only put two sticks in. Even though you can only put two sticks in. So you're reduced to, to dual channel memory. But that's exactly the reason why I brought this article up, Paul. What? Thank why? Thank you for that beautiful lead-in. Because no problem. when this board was first announced, there were kind of two audiences or two schools of thought. And the first one was like, this is awesome. This has never been done before. I was waiting for something like this. You know, so much power in a small form factor build. It's got to be great. And the other half was, you're losing, though, with this form factor, so many of the f great features that make Haswell E and X99 useful and, and great, and like, like, like quad-channel memory. And I was probably in the second camp there. I was like, yes. it's, it's cool, it's unique, I'm glad they did it, but I, I, I fail to see the practicality of it in a lot of situations. Right. Um, Linus did a build with this motherboard yeah. where they took all of their highest-end hardware that they had and they shoved it all in. Yeah. And that was very interesting. It was. It was, it was they cool actually to referenced see. that video in this uh, okay. article. Yeah. So they did. A, they did what the thirty six. Thirty six. Thirty six thread. thread. Eighteen core Xeon. Yep. The, the Titan X. The skew of a uh, name of I forget. Uh, they did a Titan X and they did two sixteen gig sticks of DDR four I, so. I think to give thirty two gig gigs of RAM. I'm not sure on that one. Sixteen gigs I think enough. is about as as much density as you can get on DDR four. More powerful modules. than I don't know my rig at home, that's for sure. Yeah. But. 
the reason why I bring this up is because Anantec went through the, the whole gamut of different tests that they usually do, both gaming and synthetic, and they found that pretty much the biggest downfall of this board is that it only supports dual channel memory. Mm -hmm. um, but from the results they found, it hardly affects the performance in all the tests they run, both in synthetic and gaming. Okay. So they really see that there's very few scenarios where a dual channel uh, solution would would really cost you that much performance over a quad channel. Mm. And, uh, and because of that, their, their main conclusion was, if you're going to go Mini ITX and you want X99, go with this board. Also, because For, it's the versus, only choice. Versus all of the other it's the only choice you have. boards that are out there. Um, but I have to give kudos to ASRock for doing something kind yeah. of out of the box that no other vendor was willing to do. Because, I mean, obviously looking at it from a motherboard manufacturer's standpoint, why would we do this? A lot of people are going to hate on it because it doesn't offer the full fledged features that mm -hmm. a regular micro or full ATX board would. Um, and ASRock is kind of known for doing something different a lot of the time. Yeah, I, I, like, I like some of the, I mean, I think there's a fair deal of, of competition on the motherboard space, and I think yeah. ASRock, even though they're probably number four when it comes to like, you know, your, your, your Gigabyte ASUS the MSI, five or whatever, ASRock, yeah. um, I think they differentiate themselves in certain ways that they have boards where you're like, oh, like, what is it? The X99 board that I, um, it's been out for a little while as well, but that they integrated two 10 gigabit NICs onto. Oh, yeah. And I was like, that's really cool. I mean, right. it's a value proposition to somebody who was like, yes. I was going to buy the 10 gigabit NICs to put on there, yep. you know, for some kind of networking system or whatever, or server. Yeah. And, you know, them being integrated saves me a lot of money. So I thought that was pretty cool. Absolutely. Um, so uh, was there any other conclusions that they drew about this board other than the fact that the dual channel DDR4 doesn't adversely affect you as much as you might expect? Right. Another thing I wanted to mention is that just based on the form factor alone, it's not the best overclocker. Mm. So, you know, they, they didn't push it too much further than I think 4.1. They, they had a 5960X in there. That's not too surprising. It's I mean. not too <laughs> surprising. I mean, you're talking about a small board that has, you know, smaller heat sinks. You, you literally have less real estate on the board yeah. for power delivery componentry. And because of that, you got smaller smaller components. You don't have as many uh, heat sinks and whatnot. If you can't do more cooling, you don't have as much room or a higher ceiling to actually push the hardware. Yeah. Uh, so because of that, they were able to get 4.1 gigahertz on 5960X at about 1.2 volts. Okay. Which still isn't bad. Completely stable. And if you're talking about an eight-core enthusiast-grade chip from Intel, that's still going to outperform most CPUs on the market, um, honestly. But uh, Again, it's not it's not intended to, to, to squeeze the most out of that chip. It's intended for a small form factor solution hmm. that uh, that you can tote around and still have a badass system, just like the one Linus showed on his channel. So altogether, it's a cool board. Good job, Azra. I, I have to say, I'm amazed to see a Mini ITX X99 LGA2011-3 uh, motherboard before ever. Seen, well, I mean, I don't think there ever is going to be an AM3 Plus. Mini ITX motherboard. Yeah. People were looking for one of those for quite some time. But, that would be nice. Um, I would. I guess it wasn't I'd wasn't worth the investment of engineering skills. Right. Well, All maybe right. you know, maybe if AMD gets bought by Microsoft. Oh wait, I've said too much. Uh, let's let's save that for later. Uh, all right, let's move on to our next segment. That's all for hot and heavy hardware. The next one is drum roll. Hot and heavy. Get that, get that thumb roll or thumbnail. Uh, that thumb roll. The thumb, the thumbnail. Do it's, you have the? It's gonna have a thumbnail for it. It's gonna start making noise in just a second. I don't know if this. It's gonna be playing audio for people, and I don't want it to. I'm gonna turn it down as much as I can. Come on. Face off. Hey, there it is. We do have face. It was like we, right, at, right after I stopped the phone. I was the, doing everything else first roll. so Kyle could could talk. draw out his his drum roll. Yes. His thumb roll as much. Mm -hmm. What is that, 13% alcohol you said <laughs> yeah. in your beer today? So that means this like from drinking fun. like an eighth of it, I've already had like a <laughs> beer. Jesus. All right. It's face off. It's face off. Paul right. and I go head to head in a... Um, Crappy online game. This is actually the latest game from Ubisoft. Um, really? Yeah. After their, uh, after their, you know, after the failure of their recent Assassin's Creed franchise, they decided to move on to uh, 360 f Smash as a as a new title. Okay. Actually, it's it's a crappy online two-player game that I found in five minutes. But we're gonna play it, and I've never played this before, Paul. Oh, so you can, can't can use the argument it. against me. We can make that, this bigger. Well, you've been playing this game all day, and you are. You say that every time. Going to be. No. So this, we have zero clue of how this game is played. I couldn't even tell like you that. how to start the game. 
Uh, Did right. I say controls. log in? Why would you ever log in? Hit one, duck, two. So one, two? P1, P2. Okay, so you hit N and M. Your controls are N and M. And I hit N and one then. and two. So we have a hit and a duck, and those are our two controls. Okay. We're playing with two people here. I I think that's all we need to know. Okay. Should, are we telling them what the what the we'll tell penal, them the penalty, the penalty after. is? We'll tell them the pen penalty after. All right. So there is a predetermined penalty for the loser there of a uh, face-off for this particular round. And, and should we go two out of three? That's probably best. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. All then. right. I have no idea what we're gonna. I don't either. What? Okay, I've got a little. All right, so you gotta hold it. Oh. Oh, you bat it back and forth. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, or you can duck. Or you can duck. That's so cool. This is. Oh, this is so scary. We've already mastered this game. <laughs> so what if you just? So so you just, so for you got, for for those of you who don't know, I'm on top. I'm on the bottom. And Paul's on bottom. Can you just stay duck? Oh, you only duck for a certain period of time, and I'm guess. Oh, the ball's gonna get faster too. Oh, see, I oh, just. Oh, you died. got hit. Okay. I just died because I forgot down. which button was which. <laughs> There's only two. I know, but the, get it together. The keyboard is, was off center, and um, wow, look at this. Apparently, you can score two hundred thousand points in this wow, game. Wow, of course they have a high score list. There's a high score right. list for everything these days. All right. All right, we're trying. We're Kyle's up one, one nothing here. Owned. Um, Owned and you. Duck is M. All right. Got this. All right. Who's serving? Uh, I think it just starts to go. Oh, you're about to get served. And. Oh, I'm so good at gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look at that hit. This is remarkably Juke. similar to Pong. Yeah, Pong with a twist. Pong that I, feel like, I feel like it's also speeding up faster this time. It is. Is that because we're hitting it more frequently or what? I think so. Okay. Oh, it's getting fast. Oh, oh you. Oh. Oh. oh Looks you like my strategy won. Son of a bitch. My strategy worked right. out this time. All right. This is... Work it out. Oh, we got a stretch. All right. We have uh, this will replace <laughs> Call of Duty. By the by way, the, the chat has gone quiet. No one's typing because no one... they're all just on the edge of their seats waiting that for. That everyone has left and <laughs> gone to do gone. something much more interesting. Than this. All right, all right. It's tied one to one. All right. I gotta remember which button's which again. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Yep. Oh, we're on this side now. All right. Oh, oh. What are we? Are we Ewoks? Let's get around. No, Jawas. Oh, <laughs> what the. <laughs> <laughs> looks like looks like I served up an ace that time. <laughs> Does that really mean I lose? What? Like okay. when you when you okay. when you Okay. You didn't you didn't you didn't predict any mulligans or whatever. That was that was that All right. that was anticlimactic. All right. Cheers, though. cheers. I have to give it to you. I have to give it to you. It was <laughs> so, so anticlimactic. Kyle was talking up his skills. Mm. So good at video games. Don't talk um, the talk, guys. Walk the walk. All right, so that was face off. 360 no scope. That's and, for sure. Um, do you want to just get your penalty over with? Yeah. Right now. So the penalty All that right. uh, Paul and I have picked out today for the loser of this game, which is me, is we must report an impromptu. <laughs> we, we must do it. We, we must conduct an impromptu reporting of a random article. That does not relate yeah. to the tech industry. So yeah, so, one, I, one or the other of us was going to have to insert another little little news story into our side, and so, the loser would have to. So Kyle's going to report right now. I went to TMZ.com. On, on TMZ the, on the on the most vapid story he could on find at TMZ. Story. That's pretty much. And it was right. like literally the first one that popped up, which and is Paris Hilton is is suing the plane crash pranksters. Did you have no idea that? Paris Hilton was pranked on a plane, or that Paris Hilton is still anyone who anybody talks about. Or cares about. I her. was, and then Kyle brought this story up, and I was like, on the one hand, I'm glad that I had zero prior knowledge of any of this happening. Yeah. However, now I do. It's still depressing that this is in the news. This is, um, there's some video here. <clears throat> yeah, make sure from, the volume's down, because she, she's allowed, she's a screamer. Yeah, she. <laughs> This is As we all know from the sex. This is, this is muted. <laughs> what? I never, I never watched. I never. Oh, you know. Anyway, um, so here she's, spri she's frightened. 
She's upset. She's out in the water. So, um, there's, there's eels. Adult eels actress, porn star, uh, adult actress Paris Hilton um, was flying to Dubai the uh, last week when a team of pranksters, independent pranksters for a Dubai television show, pranked her into thinking th- that the plane was headed to its impending doom. Uh, the the porn star actress was uh, was screaming, and there was lots of crying involved. Uh, much profanity was found. Uh, parental guidance uh, is is advised in the video. Uh, but she is now suing this this team of video producers in Dubai for emotional okay. distress. Okay, I think I think you have you have had, that's enough penance. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> Thank you for. Taking Kyle, me out of Kyle that. has served his time. I mainly did. <sighs> I had to cut so this painful. off for you, the audience, it's because. So painful. Thank you, Paul. I didn't really. You've spared us all. When we came up with that penalty for losing Face Off, I didn't realize it was going to be. It was going to be so detrimental to our audience. That's and to something us. I didn't consider. <laughs> and to so the winner too. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. Originally, to any of you guys. originally I was going to have the loser drink a jar of pickle juice, but Paul didn't have pickles, so. I was out of pixel. <laughs> that was your idea, by the way. That was Paul's idea. That to, was my to idea. To take a crap story. No, the the story you chose was not my idea. But my idea was just that. But if it was like a tech story someone cared about, the it would lo- really be yeah, a punishment. Yeah, the loser would have to take some some terrible story. So basically, what we're saying that. is we're sorry yeah. that our punishment had to bleed onto the audience. Yeah, well, you guys really ultimately paid for it, yeah. having to hear that. Everyone else story. suffered for Kyle's failing at. At face off. Thank you. All right, moving take, right take along. Take the face off board away. Oh, the face off board, which is a cooler master. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> CM Storm. Do, Rapid Eye. Do you know what? how? Do you know how I know you're drowning in hardware? Why? It's when you have a keyboard that's just reserved for face off. This is this is <laughs> the face off keyboard. That's all we use it for. Not, for this is segment. not all that I use it for. Oh, I yeah? also I also use this keyboard for to, all con- the to control you don't go to? to control my teleprompter. Okay. If I'm recording out here by myself, I plug it in and I run it down there and I tap. Is that the one you use with your foot? I tap the space bar. That's disgusting. With my, I, <laughs> I have. I wear protective covering. I have a habitat of germs no. and bacteria on my hands. No, now. no, no. It's, <laughs> I always do it right after I shower. I hope you're wearing socks. That's why. Clean socks. All it's right. A, it's the rapid eye. It's that's going to. the CM Storm. Hey, rapid eye. There you go. Rapid Thanks, Cooler Master. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's going to do it for face off. We're going to move on to pin my PC now. With the appropriate lower thirds thumbnail. Oh, do we have a lower thirds? <laughs> oh, we do. All of your segments have lower thirds. This is completely unplanned. There you go. We need to update this though. I All feel right. like we should give Matt Philly more credit for this rather what than just have a couple face ostriches. Why don't we just have his face? Like, why don't we have him with the with the ostrich or the flamingo? We need you, a flamingo. With the flamingo. Yeah, flamingo. Oh, oh, Matt Philly riding a flamingo is like the perfect yeah, metaphor for Pimp My PC. Something like that. Anyway, but, but Pimp My PC uh, is Kyle's segment that he stole from Matt, yes. which is basically where we look at pictures that you all submit to us via Twitter, yeah. and then we uh, come down with the hammer on them and say, this is what sucks about your build. Boo! This is how you can do things better. Sounds, um, so, sounds so it's, negative. It's emphasis heavily, heavily on aesthetics here. Yeah. Um, we care Absolutely. little about the actual functionality of your system. We're just about making things look pretty. Right. Which is why it's on Kyle's half of the show. Because, you know, what makes a person pimp is like what kind of cane, like what kind of diamonds are on his pimp cane. Or, you know, the rings on his hand when he backhands a hoe. It's not like how effective, how good of a businessman he is. That's not what defines a pimp. It's how pimp he is. Okay. That's just a good. brief history lesson good to in, know, okay. in, in pimpage. Right. Anyway, our first rig comes from... Kelgar, thank you for sending this in. This is, he even yeah. set up an imager. 750D? 750D? It's it looks like big. it. It's too big. Too big, I gotta shrink it down. That's a good case, man. You got some good airflow in I there. Do, I do really like 750D. Me too. Um, did they ever update it? Did they ever update the 750D? The, the, it, still has, it still had USB 3.0 pass-throughs the last I checked. They, but, um, I don't know. I don't know. 750D has a, a side panel uh, release an opening mechanism that's one of my favorites. Okay. Um, all right, so of course our case in a the Denon X2000 AVR. What's that? It's the the unit next to it, I believe. Oh, okay. Audio so we're not focusing on that one. We're just looking yeah. at this system here. Um, in case anyone was wondering what that was. And you've got some nice color coordination going on. This is one of the few system uh, pictures that we get in where the 
power supply actually matches the rest of the build. Mm. That's usually the thing that stands out and that's like completely clashes with your color scheme is the power supply. It seems like more of an afterthought when it comes to the, th the overall theme of your build. Nope. But in this particular uh, situation, you've got definitely a Corsair fan. I mean, you've got a Corsair SSD, you've got a Corsair cooler, There's several. Fans, there's several Corsair fans supply. there, Kyle. Yes, yes there are. Okay. They're everywhere. Um, uh, this looks like a primarily Corsair and it's a very, Asus build. It's a very Corsair out build. We have Corsair memory, we have Corsair SSD, Corsair, Corsair case, Asus. Corsair fans, Corsair CPU cooler, and Corsair power supply. And Asus motherboard and graphics uh, card. Asus motherboard and graphics card. I mentioned this a little while back that you could build right. a system with only Corsair and Asus parts, yes. except for, well, a hard drive if you wanted a hard drive, right. mm -hmm. and the CPU, yeah. um, which is kind of cool. And I will say that's one benefit you have going with Corsair is they've got that kind of that horizontal integration of mm -hmm. all the different price points. And if you go with all of Corsair's red and black components, right. you can make a pretty uh, decent uh, case here. Now, yeah. That said, is there is there stuff we can critique about this? Yeah, I I, I think so. I th I mean, the only reason I pick some of these rigs, guys, is because I feel like there could be improvement. Yeah. If I don't pick your rigs and you've been sending it in for it, weeks, it means your rig is too. It good. It means your rig's too good. Yep. So build a shitty rig and then send it in, because otherwise I won't pick it. Because Ooh. I don't know. I feel like people who really need the help he deserve it. He also sent a picture of his man cave. He has a looks like is that a projection a projector? Looks like a projector. Yeah. Uh, up on the wall, nice. which is pretty nice. He's got a as well as another TV on the left for additional TV things. Jeez. Need more monitors, that's all I would say. Oh yeah, and there's a projector. That's very Soundproofing. nice. Soundproofing. Yeah. This is a nice little man cave there. Jeez. All right, focus. All right, okay. Focus okay. on the build. Let's, let's, take, let's take a look at this one. Okay, so the first thing I noticed about this build is that if you really wanted to pimp it out, you could do some pretty sweet sleeving. Um, mm. Cable sleeving is something to make or make make your build stand out or make it pop. Don't do it. Don't do it. Paul is kind of in a crisis right now, <laughs> a sleeving crisis with his uh, power it's supply. Not in a crisis. It's just his it's more like an mercury. ongoing struggle. <laughs> yeah. I, I commend you for for taking it on. Um, but if you guys, if you have the, I don't know, the gumption to do Chutz, it. Chutzpah. The chutzpah. Is that a is that right? Yeah, yeah, of course. That's a that's a like the uh, the uh, the willpower or the, the boldness, yeah, yeah, the yeah, boldness yeah. to do it, um, the audacity to do it. Uh, it it can really make your build shine and give it kind of a more I don't know showpiece Ooh. look. It looks more like a showpiece well, just by adding in some custom sleeve tra tables. Tractor Man's pointing out there's a lack of LEDs, at least that Indeed. we can see here. Yes, that's another thing. I would like to see some LEDs. Unless it's on the side panel, we can't see it. Also, there's a Samsung 8, that looks to be, I believe that's an 840 Evo. Yeah. That's in there. Right. Right alongside the Force, G, uh, uh, Force GT. Mm-hmm. And you know, those two SSDs, they're, they're, they're harsh competitors. They are not gonna play, no, they'll play nice together. <laughs> but, um, they're fighting for space in the case. Um, overall, I think this is a really nice build. I think just certain things that you could do Slay some cables, um, and yeah. add some, some LEDs. Some cable sleeving would, would, would make it pop. An LED might might light it up a little bit. This is the only um, picture we have of it with the side panel on, and it looks like it's still off here. So we don't really have mm -hmm. a, we don't really know. Maybe there are, are LEDs and there's just no pictures of it with it on, right. with LEDs. I would say that the power supply area down here at the bottom, I mean, they're all routed properly. It's still, I don't know, it looks a little, yeah, a little messy a little down frayed. there. Yeah, um, I don't know if you could if you could Zip bundle those up. up a little bit better or something like that. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean overall, I mean, I mean, I mean, again, functionally here, you, you got your intakes, you got a, you got good airflow, you don't have anything that's blocking stuff necessarily. Yeah. So um, not not <clears> bad <throat> at all as far as that goes. Um, but yeah, it, it looks like from here you're going towards the personal customization route. Yes. Where it's like you've got all this Corsair stuff and it matches really well. But also, you know, anyone with the money to buy this stuff could put together this exact same system. So maybe yeah. from here you go into something like a, of like, how can I make this more unique to me? Right. Um, cable sleeving is a great way to do that. Yeah. Um, some lighting might be a good way to do that. Yep. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, nice build for sure. Yeah, thank you. We'll thank you for sending that in. Uh, next up, we got Eric. Eric sends in his builds, which is 
Eric Landa. I I don't know. What did does you it define R four? Uh, oh, what case is this? Or define R five? I think a really good. Uh, well, there's some. One of the two. I think it's an R. Good question. No, no, no. It's an R five. Yeah. At least it's an R five based on the fan that's included. Right. I can tell based on the indentations here that this is the newer fractal that's fan. That's true. Yeah. That's my guess. Is so, there? Did he cover? Did he yes. put additional covering over the yes, exhaust? Yes, he did. It looks like there's some foam padding or something over there. This is. Uh, I don't know why. What what purpose he, would that he serve? He put an imager link, but you didn't you didn't include that. Imger. Imger? You don't like I, Imager? I don't know. I like Imger. Imger. Interesting mount of this Toshiba hard drive right there. Right. I'm wondering how so he's mounted that to the look. floor of the case. Wait, what? What? He said it's changed over the past two years. So. It's the evolution of Eva. So he kind of goes through the different stages. So it's probably changed cases. That's obviously uh, okay. a different case. That looks like a... It is? Five. Yeah, look. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. It's cropped. No. It's cropped, so... It's just cropped in. Don't crop your pictures. He's got a... Uh, Stop it. Master Chief in there. Master Chief. Um, this looks like a customized SLI uh, cable connector. It's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Cable management in the back is nothing to write home about. Yeah. But that's in the back. You can't see it, right? He's got two more SSDs back there. Uh, He's got a crap these have to be 980s with this back plate. Possibly. Very inter I'm I'm curious about the power, uh, the hard drive mounting here. It's right. like, it's in a very mm. prominent place for being a not that like blingy of a product. You know, yeah. it's like a Toshiba hard drive. Right. That's super exciting. What is this? Computer dust filter. So he's added filtration. He's added some. So I will. I will say uh, you get extra points. This is Kyle's side of the show, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna say that you should get extra points okay. for stuff like some of the modifications he's done from a practical perspective here, like some of the dust filtration stuff that he's added, or some of the noise dampening. He's definitely added extra foam in areas. Oh, it's because on the Define R5, there's some passive ventil ventilation holes yeah. right where that. You got passive ventilation that would be right here next right to the GPUs. Is. You've okay. got um, this this rear exhaust fan, which I would say maybe it isn't in an ideal position. I would say sliding it down as far as you can might be a better position from that. But he did add some extra foam down here to block yeah. the extra space. This, I believe, is on, It's it's got rails for the mount, so you can maybe slide that down, and that would give you a little bit better exhaust there and just move the pad up to the top. On the R5, does it? I think so. Uh, I can't. Mine, the Define S doesn't. The Define S doesn't? No. Well, maybe that's why the Define S sucks, and the Define <laughs> R5 is way better. Um, Shots fired. But again here, I mean... All right, so the only wide, so, the only wide shot we have of the system is, is this one. Um, so... Clearly, you have a clean build. The cable management's yeah. pretty good. Uh, the Noctua fan there seems very out of place. Yep. I think that just is kind of an eyesore. As good of the perform as good of uh, performers as Noctua fans are, I still think that. I don't know. Just the fact that there's one of them on there, and that the fans on your your front radiator aren't matching, I think that really kind of I takes away from the overall. Theme. I think we had a comment in chat as well that this looks like it's in push pull. If you if the there's intake fans in the outside okay, here. Okay. Yeah. Right. If that's the case, that's probably not necessary. So you're probably not getting a whole lot extra. Yeah. If that is if that is the case. I'm actually not positive. Just get another fan fans out there. like the top yeah. one and put it down there and and put the Noctua one at the front so that it's it's mm. concealed a bit more. Because um, overall you have a nice little like you know black and gray with you know hints of of green and red mind you but there's very little of it so it's not yeah. it's not too distracting the hard drive is what gets me i've never seen a hard drive mounted like that in, i've seen a hard drive mounted mounted kind of like that it just seems weird to me that it's right there maybe he did it to block the power supply cables a little bit but it's like if this was like maybe a velociraptor one of the special velociraptors that wd made with the window in it so you could see the mechanisms or something like that then it would make a little bit more sense this is a pretty basic Toshiba. Like hard, that you got from drive. like an external drive yeah. three years ago. And, and took out. 
And having it right there doesn't make the most sense to me. Well, you know, in 2016, they're they're expecting SSD prices to drop below a hard drive, so yeah, you can just so swap that out really and that mount anymore. it to the, the, the back side panel, and you'll mm -hmm. be good to go. Yeah. There you go. And uh, like many people in chat, I would agree, the Noctua fan, if you're looking at an aesthetics perspective, you could swap that out with a fan that will give you almost as much performance. Granted, Noctua fans, especially if that's an NFF12, are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And are really hard to beat performance-wise, but right. if you're trying to make things look pretty, they Noctua are... Noctua has dark fans now. They do. They're the industrial, industrial series of fans, yeah. um, which aren't exactly the same characteristics as the NFF12. True. But they're still very good they're fans. They're still good, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, swapping that out and then f just finding some other something else to do with that hard drive. Yeah. I I don't know, either getting rid of it or I mean you've got it all the cages and I appreciate that. So I'm guessing maybe you have more storage in the uh, 2.5 inch mounts behind the motherboard tray. Anyway, we should move on. We're cool. We're taking a while. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that, uh, moving. Eric. Moving on, we've got Kyle. Not me. It's not my build. This is a different Kyle. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, there are more than one of me in the world. Uh, and this, this Kyle in particular brings his, um, his individual system, which has a bit of a funky color uh, spectrum going on here. No, 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 Kyle. I see exactly what he's going for here. The red, blue, yellow theme that we all love so much. Yes. Primary colors. Primary. Yes. Red, red, blue, that, those are primary colors, right? Yeah, red, blue, and yellow. Yellow, those yeah, that's prim primary, color. primary colors and black. There's no green, though. Um, what is that red tube with the MSI that's series? Two, that's just a tube that he somehow painted or taped over to reduce GPU sag, I would guess. Really? To reduce the video card sag. Because what it looks like to me is a red piece of flexible tubing that's kind of fixed on the bottom, and he put it there to stick the G series logo on, and then it goes up and bends back under the, the graphics card, but I mean, maybe it's providing it, it some support. Looks like, it looks like a crutch to me. Yeah. It looks like he was like, oh, I'm getting some Jeep, uh, video card sag. But it looks bent, right? It looks like it's further back here and further towards the front right here. Because mm. look, look at the point where it's no, making it contact. No, it looks like it's right underneath with, it. it. looks like it's The right point underneath. where it's making contact with the case down here uh -huh. is way towards the front of the case. That would be closer to like it's 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 in it's parallel or in mm. front of where the power supply is there. That's what makes me think it's a piece of tubing. I mean, it's in a place where it should be a brace, and that's what it should be. Unless it's just a longer piece of tubing that he still he could still use it for support, even though it's got a bend in it. Or he used you know a piece I mean? of metal or something inside there and put the tubing around it just to kind of mask it. I don't Interesting. know. I mean, Interesting. it's I. I don't want to say I've never seen something like that, but it's definitely very unique. Right. Um, so yeah. they they do sell um, brackets for to reduce help reduce GPU sag, to reduce video card sag. I don't know if you've seen them, Paul. Yeah. But they they basically utilize the the PCI slots on the back of your case, and it's just like a, a little like rod or a little you know plate that goes across your video card and somehow attaches to it adheres to it and you screw it into the I think it's the PCI slot above your video card or it might be the one below it I'm not sure but mm -hmm. it basically just provides some reinforcement so that you don't sag as much I've never used one personally but I hear they work pretty well and I think the main benefit apart from the obvious is that it doesn't look too out of place yeah right it's actually mounting to a native part of your case like the PCI slot, um, where it doesn't look, you know, super obvious. I think that's the point: is try to trying to reduce sag. And I've tried to I've tried to do this too. I've tried to reduce the sag of my GTX 970 back in the day, where it was just like going down a whole half an inch. It was bad, and there was no real way I could do it and pull it off with with primo aesthetics in mind. It always looked kind of weird out of place with a rod underneath it. Or it didn't matter like how you know how what color it was if it matched the color it just looked weird. Um, so check out one of those uh, those those brackets those PCI brackets for for GPU sag. And what are you laughing about? Because I feel like some portion of the past fifteen or thirty seconds of you speaking could be taken out of context and be very funny. Some of the, there was a lot That's of just how I there operate, was a lot of potential Paul. for innuendo or puns or double entendres or anything like that in yeah, there. If only if only Fractal Josh was so here. So maybe maybe somebody could work on something like that. <laughs> Fractal Josh is here. Is he? No, he's not in chat. Dick. But he is he is here in town. I, uh, last I heard. Um, 
Okay, so let, let's 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 wrap this one up there. Uh, on. Wait, are we moving on? We have we've given zero suggestions. Okay, here. all right, yeah. Sorry. All right, here's here's what I will say. Color. Your cable management is very good here. Mm. You have everything going where it should. Um, for the most part, in a fairly direct fashion, fairly. you've got the Corsair th link here is probably the most obvious one that stands out. That that's kind of out there. I'd maybe maybe you could go up with that, up through one of these connectors down here. But granted, you might not have, not have enough cable length if you're trying to get that down here to plug into one of the USB headers. Um, other than that, though, uh, your your color scheme is a little off. I feel like you can you could go with. You've got black, red, blue, and yellow. I feel like you need to remove one of those primary colors. Yeah. Remove the blue, remove the yellow. Harder to remove the red. But go with two of the three, maybe, and that would that would make things seem a little bit less, yeah. a little bit more, more planned out. Get rid of the yellow, because you've got blue on your WD drive here. Right. And, you know what? And your memory. S save the memory for another build down <laughs> the line. Get some red heat spreaders, or black would do the trick as well. I think it would match, match nicely. And for your power supply, the R and the M and that little yellow bar is really all you have to worry about. And those are all really easy to mask off. Yeah. If you wanted to just get some red spray paint, you could easily mask off those letters and that shape. It's a, it's a freaking rectangle. Yeah. It's just rectangles and, and right angles. Mask it off, spray paint it red. It'll look fabulous, honestly. And you don't have to buy a new power supply, you know, it's it's not rocket science, so. Just a very, a very nice build. I like this build. Yeah, it's very functional. Yeah. It looks it looks good. That's a good cooler. GTX. Right. Uh, we have we have GTX. five more five more to go. Mark, thank you, Kyle. I love you, Kyle. From right. Kyle. Here's uh, Kyle. here's Mark Senegal. All right, Mark. Uh, updated after your feedback from first episode. Wait, we this is one we've already discussed. Apparently, and I don't I I kind of remember it because of the fluorescent blue. This um, has a 3770K, two R9, two ninety X. Power of supply Very is powerful build. up, fan never on. He's saying the fan on his power supply never turns on. That's possible. It's one of the ones that never. I'm wondering up. if he's bottlenecking it all with the 3770K. And two two ninety Xs. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be difficult I mean, to say, but I, I mean, if the 3770K is overclocked, which it should be, since this is a water-cooled system, unless he's also <laughs> overclocking the 290Xs, 290Xs should not. They don't overclock depending, great, but depending on your 3770K. Yeah. Yeah, but you should be. You should have a, a decent amount of headroom on that 3770K, yeah. especially with the water cooling. You're still doing pretty well for yourself. Um, so. I, I'm not a, a water cooling expert. Two pictures I'm in the here. midst of building my first ever water cooling system. Paul's already built his. He's still kind of working on it as well. Oh, not just um, kinda. <laughs> he's in the thick of it. Yeah. Uh, with, the, with the sleeving and all. But I, honestly, I think this is a really nice looking system. I love the blue, kind of translucent blue that you have going on. It's not like a pure yeah. berry blue, but it's, um, you know, you've got some kind of liquid in here that, I don't know. I. I what do you think of the liquid, Paul? Is the liquid... Uh, the liquid is clear. It's clear. And it's only lit... And, and that's totally cool. That's fine. Because yeah. uh, one thing I will say with going with a colored liquid is it can leave, some leave residue. residue or mm -hmm. potentially even clog up a system. But how um, is it blue? Is, it, is that just because I, of the no, LEDs the blue, that The blue is there? just from an LED. Okay. I think um, it looks really clean, actually. I do. I would say... The water block especially. The RAM is a great touch. You got those, like you know, LEDs that bounce around. I don't know what round that is, but the one thing I will say is the pump looks it's out of place. probably a Vexor, a Vexor, I think. Possibly a Vexor. The pump looks a bit out of place for me. Um, the pump is something that I feel if it's like a small and it's just like right. very... The pump right here? Yeah. Is, I don't know. Is that the pump or is that just a flow indicator? Is that a flow indicator? Well, it's definitely a flow indicator because it's got a spinny thing there. But um, oh, maybe it's just I'm not flow positive. Indicator. It might be a pump. I'm I'm not sure. At any rate, whatever it is, I feel like it it kind of takes away from the the main focus, which is your video card. Right. You have two beautiful cards in a multi GPU setup. You've got that awesome Crossfire setup, and I'd like that to be just like on its own, along with your water block that XS. CP, what is it? X, 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 XPC, X, 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 XSPC. XSPC. Um, water block is gorgeous, and I think that the uh, the regulator just kind of takes away from some of that. 
Um, granted, I know you're using acrylic hard light tubing and kudos to you because that's no easy task to take on. So much respect for that. Um, I don't know, I just feel like maybe if that, that, uh, that regulator or pump, whatever it is, was located off a little bit more off site, you would be able to reserve a little bit more attention to your video cards and your CPU, which I think look yeah. beautiful. I even like the, the little bit of copper accent on the video cards. I think that matches so well with the blue. Um, I would consider maybe ditching. You've got you've got several fans right down here at the bottom right. They look a little clunky, um, right? The two, especially at the bottom, seem like they might be conflicting with yeah. conflicting with each other. Plus, everything's water cooled, so this might be a little overkill. You might be able to get rid of one of those. Yeah, I, um, I think for the sake of a cleaner build, like just yeah. remove most of those fans. You and know, you and then it's them. it's also hard to say based on this image, but I would say you've got a nice kind of blue light going on the, at the top, which I think works well. But yeah. adding some more light to the lower section of the case, or maybe the bottom right, right. might balance everything out a and little doesn't bit more. It, and if you look at the power supply, doesn't it look like he's got some white LEDs down there? I can't tell. Look at the power supply. It's, it yeah, looks like no, there's three I, I agree. white LEDs It looks LEDs like there might be some it. reflection or something down here, but... We also might need to see like more pictures because right yeah. now we can't see it with the side panel on. It's not really wide enough. Right. Um, so yeah, uh, but it looks very nice. Yeah. Um, Overall, really clean looking build, Mark. Yeah. So good, good build, Mark. It makes makes me more excited to get my freaking water cool build finished. Oh, yeah. It's taking right. a while. Next thank builds you, from Brett, uh, Brett uh, Gregg. Next Brent. Brett, what do you got here for? So this is sir? his first build. Nice. I love I love first timers. Um, he wants to find cable sleeving in colors other than standard colors. Okay, fair enough. Um, you've got a very stealth vibe going on with this system, which yeah. I really like. Uh, you get the white LEDs. I'm, I'm I only have to assume that those are white. They look kind of purplish in the pics, but I'm sure that's just the camera, the sensor. Um, very stealthy looking. If you really wanted to get into sleeved and colored cables. And you didn't want just pure black. Uh, I think white might be the way to go. Um, I don't know. Just because you've already got some white going in here, mm. you've got excuse me. You've got your optical drive, all right, which is white. It looks white in the picture, and you've got the Corsair logo, the LED. You can make white. Uh, so having some white cabling in your sleeving. Granted, I wouldn't make all the cables white. If you're going to do custom extensions or custom sleeve your your modular power supply because that is a modular power supply EVGA 750G2 make them two-toned make them black and white and kind of alternate and find a nice pattern that works well also if you wanted to add some more white to the equation because you've got a lot of black going on yeah. um, just, to, just to break it up and kind of make it a, a more level even playing field I would add some white to the fans possibly like having the fan blades white uh, uh, you know, along with the sleeved cables, which are black and white, I think would make for a nice two-tone um, solution. So that's just my opinion. But um, I, I mean, I, I think he could also like color scheme wise. I think he could also stick with what he's got because I do. I mean, like you said at the beginning, I, I, I like how this build looks overall. I like that it's mostly black or dark colored inside, and then white LEDs. Yeah. Um. So I, I mean, what you're saying. Could totally work, but it yeah. would be a totally. I think it would be a much different look than this. This is this is very subdued. Yeah. Whereas whereas that would be a little bit more on on the blingy side. Right. Um. So uh, just another possibility, another something you could do here. I would say, if you want to do some custom painting on your optical drive, that's always a good way to to kind of yeah. make that blend in with the rest of it. Right. Uh, and then like take your cable management to the next level, because it's good right now. It could be a little bit better. Yeah. You could find other subtle ways of um, routing some of the cables. For instance, up here at the top, some of yeah. these that you have going off to the side. If you can find ways to to bundle these up so that they're all going, so you only have like one group going to one direction and then everything else happens behind the scenes, behind the motherboard or something like that. Yeah. Even working with cable extensions for the power plugs or something like that um, could be a way to really fill that out. The other thing is, um, at least the only thing I, I noticed just from looking at that at this, is you've got... Uh, a lot of a lot of drive space. You've got six drive bays, and you're only using one or maybe two of them. Um, so you could possibly yeah. lose one of those drive cages. I agree. 
um, just to just to clear things out a little bit and, and allow more direct airflow from the front of the case back towards the, the GPU and everything else. Right. So that could be another possibility. The, the the reason why I suggested maybe going with like a white and black theme or something like that is because he specifically asks in his tweet, where can I find cable sleeve in colors other than the standard colors? So you're saying you were responding to the needs of the customer, whereas I was just going off on my own tangent and saying whatever I wanted to say. Yes. Yes. Precisely. Well. Screw you. <laughs> no, no, no. That, you'll you'll have right. to ask my fiance about you, that if one. If you want to bling it up, there's no doubt that um, adding adding uh, cable but, sleeving and custom colors is a great way to do it. Yeah. Go check out Mainframe Customs. They have some really good uh, sleeving options there. Oh, uh, yeah. But uh, moving on to the next one. Thank you, Brett, for sending that in. We've got another fee. we got two more here. Taylor sends in his build. Taylor, what you got? Oops. Let's see it, buddy. All right, so he's got a green and black color scheme, and he's uh, stayed true to the theme. And there's really not many other colors here other than the RAM, which I feel like could also be spray-painted green, possibly. Yeah. I, I know that there's so many schools of thought on you know spray-painting heat sinks of anything. Like, oh, that's going to affect performance. Blah, blah, blah. RAM, you don't need to worry about it. RAM, you don't need to worry about. Even like the heat sink of your motherboard, I, I don't think. As long as you do like a single coat, maybe like one coat of primer and mm -hmm. one coat of a base coat, I think you're okay. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I think the greens don't match up here. Like the, the greens in your cables are significantly different than the lime green color scheme of your the the, the fan trim. Yeah. The the trim the trim rings around your. Although your they do Corsair seem fans. they do seem to match the motherboard, but that's. What motherboard is this, and did he customize MSI. the motherboard? It's MSI, and he customized it, for so sure. The green, there's a green dragon on there. Yeah. So that, I've only, seen, I've only seen that in red before. Right. So he's clearly painted it. Um, just huh. go a step further and paint those, those fan rims. Honestly, like it's kind of more of a true, I don't know, forest green, as opposed to your fan rims, which are more of a lime green. And do the same thing for your power supply mm. sticker. Uh, just mask off that stuff. It's really not that hard to mask off. I was also going to say you've got a couple uh, lower end fans here for your intake at the, the bottom. bottom and at the front. Yeah. Those stick out to me a lot like sore yes, thumbs. The, the clear plastic, which after it's been out in the wild for a few months or whatever, starts to get discolored and shows, shows dust. Age. And it just, yeah, yeah. I don't like the looks of those at all. They might be LED fans. Often those are LED fans. So they might look okay at night. Uh, or yeah, in but I mean, I, but I'd say an LED strip would be a better way of getting light into the yeah. case if that's what your concern is. I agree. But yeah, ditch those fans and figure out a way to match up your, your the, the greens that you got going on here, like yeah. Kyle said. I think, yeah. and, and you'd be good. Other than that, though, I mean, cable management wise, the only Very other solid. thing I was going to say is is uh, these, these look like pretty nice cable extensions that you've got going on here. Yeah. Training them with um, like cable combs or something like that mm -hmm. to rather than the the, uh, the zip ties. Granted, the zip ties are fine; they're doing their job and they're get, they're getting the job done right now. Right. But if you really want to show those off a little bit more and make it a little bit more presentational, yeah. using the cable combs to kind of make those all those nice big rainbow arcs coming out of there would be yep. a good way to do that. I agree. All right. Thanks, Taylor. Moving along. Moving up, we got Tom. He's our last one today. Tom. Tom, what you got for this us, bra? This is an orange case. Orange case. I don't know if that's been modded or if that's original. No, this is a probably original this is because a Corsair he's got an orange case. fan too. So Wait, this did, is an old he, school case. He, he didn't give us any information on on. on no this. info, so we're just going based off of visuals here. No, I think this is a Corsair. Ah, crap. Hold yeah, on. I'll, I, I'll I'll have it up. I would know it right when I saw me, it, but me, I, I can't think of the, the name. At any rate, switch the picture though to the front end so I can talk about it. No. Okay. Do it. There we go. Okay. So first thing that caught my eye is that you have a cable running across your video card. 230T. 230T. I think is what the this Corsair is. 230T is what Paul is proposing that this case might be. Some, some, someone said 300R. I'm not sure about that. Uh, 230T. Yeah, 230T is correct. The 230T. Solid this case. Is, this is definitely a 230T. It's a budget case, right? Uh, it's less expensive, yes, but for a less expensive case, I had a good experience with it. Nice. In, in my experience. I think black and orange is a great color scheme. It's about 70, 80 bucks. And I think, you know what the thing is? Is that I think the blue and orange even works nicely together. I, I, I agree. But you have to kind of drive that home. If you wanted to keep this case, granted this is an older case, you could easily save up some money for a 
I don't know, a, a slightly more premium case that still has, you know, a well, maybe better airflow or something like that. But but I, I like this case. I, I've built in this case before, and yeah. I think it's well put together. Yeah. And I, I, this is, case has a weird thing. The side panels on it slide forward before they pop off, which I just thought was unique and kind of weird. I mean, they're oh, still the, they're still the kind where they pop on the side and you have to it's slide got these them. Grommet, or these the uh, cutouts at the front on the front panel. I don't know if it hooks is in right there the, or not. All, the all I know is in? they slide forward and then pop off instead of backwards okay. and then pop off, which, okay. which I thought was was a little unique. Yeah. But um. Yeah, I mean, I I like I think the blue works in there. You you gotta you gotta upgrade your CPU cooler. I mean, yeah. that's that's just. First Again. things first, that's what I would do there. Right. You also have a different arrangement for your expansion cards here. It's not bad, but it's something that you might flip flop around. Mm -hmm. um, what is this? Is this, this is a sound card on top, right? I as far as I can tell, tell. Maybe. It must be because it has a, a plug going into it that might be like your front panel audio or something like that. Possibly. Um, I mean, it's not the most terrible thing to have your 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 GPU in the lower slot. Yeah, um, but but the top slot is usually laid out better for that. I mean, yeah. granted, if you're talking about like an, a PCIe Gen three by eight versus by sixteen, it's probably not going to make a difference anyway because right. you are already got plenty of bandwidth. Right. But traditionally speaking, flipping those would be a little bit more of a common configuration, and that would allow you to tuck away that cable that's going into the sound card a little bit better. Yeah. Upgrading the CPU heatsink fan would be a big upgrade to this system and it would probably let you overclock your CPU if it's not or if it's overclockable, of course. Right. Um, other than that, everything looks pretty decent. You've got a bit of a bundle of cables here near the power supply, which mm -hmm. it's hard I it's hard time. Yeah, it's hard to see exactly what's going on there, but you might be able to tie those back a little bit better. Yeah. Um, but overall, yeah, again, nice little build. Um, but yeah, CPU CPU heatsink fan. That's that's an, sure. that's an easy upgrade here. I agree. You can get a Hyper 212 or something along those lines. Yeah. If you want something nice looking, uh, the Enermax one, the black one, uh, would would blend in. I, I think pretty nicely here. Their, their Twister. ETS T40. Twister, right? Yeah, the Twister, the Twister one, because yeah. that one is black with blue, and it would it would mm, blend in mm -hmm. pretty decently here. I like blue and orange. I'm yeah. I'm a fan <laughs> of the blue and orange color scheme. So thank you for that one, uh, right. Tom. Thank you. And uh, last but not least, this isn't really one that we would critique because this guy could probably teach us a thing or two about building. Um, but this is Travis. It comes from Travis, one of our dedicated followers. And I just wanted to give him an honorable mention because... This is the White Metropolis. This is an amazing looking custom modded PC. And the kicker here, Paul, yeah. is that it's his first custom build. What? This is the first attempt that he's ever done at a custom rig. And I don't know if you happen to catch it. I found this on Twitter the other day, but Nvidia, I think it was Nvidia Garage or Nvidia, one of the Nvidia branches did an article on his his system and oh, did yeah? an interview with with Travis. Um, and just asked him his rationale and his his thought process behind this incredible system. I think it's one of the most unique systems I've ever seen personally. I think this could be on milliondollarpc.com. It's just that good. It's scary good. Um, the amount of thought and effort and time put into this, I think he said he logged over about 140 hours. Yeah. Um, which is a decent amount, more than I've got to spend. Uh, just came out with a beautiful product that, I don't know. It's just it's just fun is to look a, at. Is that a saber tooth? Uh, Mark's Mark S. I forget if it's a saber tooth or a griffin. It might be a griffin. I can't remember. Oh, because it's mini. Oh, you're right. It's mini ITX. Yeah. So it's a it's a modded griffin board. Yeah. So painted. this is a smaller form factor and uh, uh, case labs case. Uh, and wow. The cool thing about it. Oh, I like the I, I love the uh, the mod on the on the SSD. It's beautiful. Everything's beautiful. I don't I don't know. You how know what? Now that you mentioned it, I have seen this before because I know yeah. this this skyline theme that he's got right. going on. I, I I recognize that. Yes, and and the, that's not just some bullshit skyline thing that he cut out. Those yeah. are actually famous cities. Uh, well, um, he used one from Hong Kong. Oh, okay. One's Jakarta. 
Ah. And then I forget what the other one is, but um, they're recognizable skylines that, you know, if you've been to those countries, you could probably recognize um, that that's that kind of silhouette yeah. on, on his mod. And I think what's really cool is uh, if you go to one of the, the more overarching exterior shots, you'll see that there's a lower compartment to the case. And that's actually detachable. So he's got like a release valve that goes to the bottom compartment of this of this uh, case labs case where there's a 360 radiator down there, uh -huh. right? For, for, you know, better cooling and whatnot. But if he wants to take the system to like a LAN party or something, he simply closes the valve, disconnects the, the tubing, and just takes the upper portion for portability so this, sake. this whole lower section. Here. Yes, so that's completely yeah. detachable. He can close it off, he can close the loop. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Isn't that pretty freaking sweet? That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. This is his, and, and keep in mind, this is his first custom mod. I'm doing my custom first mod for the first time, and so, is, so did Paul for the last month or two. And this is just miles beyond what either of us have been able to achieve. Obviously, we, we've got a lot of other things on our plate, but <laughs> unbelievable. I, I'm so impressed with this build, especially that it's his first time that I just had to give a shout out to Travis. So that's, thank you, sir. That's beautiful. For saying that in. It's truly Great a work job, of art. Travis. Truly a work of art. All and right. uh, on that note, that's going to sum up Pimp My PC. So, um, wow, I can't believe it's already been an over an hour of yes. my segment. So I'm going to try to, let's fly through these uh, tech news Some articles. Tech news. We've got tech news coming up. And um, the first article I want to talk about, jumping right into it, is the Fury X having some issues with coil line. Uh, for those of you who have been early adopters of Fury X or the Fury line, let us know in comments if you've experienced anything like this, but there have been multiple reports that the new Fury X cards, at least the first shipment, have been experiencing a, quite a bit of coil whine as well as pump noise, which the two are kind of go, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, but uh, that's pretty much due to the AIO cooler that's built into the cards. And these AIO coolers on the Fury Xs are, uh, they're from Cooler Master. Mm -hmm. Our friends at Cooler Master, really great guys. Um, but apparently they're having some issues with coil wine. And if you're not familiar with coil wine, it's this really high pitched noise that occurs, usually when your system's under load. When mm. things start to spin up and you're, you know, you're taxing the system, you hear this really high pitched noise. And as faint as it is, it's still noticeable in many cases. And it can be really annoying and take you out of the gaming experience on certain occasions. So um, that's what people are experiencing with early Fury X cards. NVIDIA has stated that this this is a known issue with, with uh, preliminary cards and that they are fixing the issue. Co uh, Cooler Master is hard at work fixing the, uh, rectifying the issue and that newer Fury X cards from here on out will not suffer that uh, that, that, that coil wine noise. So. Yeah, I think originally they were there was a statement that it was just like the review samples that were going out, but then people started getting actual retail samples mm -hmm. and experiencing the same thing. So, um, yeah, who knows if they might be doing returns or replacements or anything like that, depending. Right. And a lot of the reports I have read have said that it is noticeable, but only if you're like really listening for it and with the side panel off and everything like that and like you're right up next to the card whereas if it's in a normal system and you put the side panel on and you've got other mm. you know typical pc noise going on in there that it becomes pretty much negligible yeah so yeah yeah right. i think um if you know if it's if it's only occurring within the boundaries of the case and i can't hear it outside of that i don't care it's really it comes down to the real world real world performance if i can't hear the coil line Outside of my case, even with like, you know, granted no music or no video game audio coming through my speakers or my headset, if I can't hear it, I don't care. Yep. It's only what I can hear and perceive that I as a, as a user really care about. But a lot of people were also reporting that they can hear it outside of their case and that it's a distraction and whatnot. So I think um, I, I, it's good that NVIDIA and Cooler Master are working hard to rectify the issue. But Moving on, let's go uh, move on to this story that I found about Netflix. And I don't, we don't typically talk about Netflix too much, but I thought this er this article really piqued my interest. This um, is from Tech Dirt. It's from Tech Dirt, folks at Tech Dirt. Thanks for sending this in. Um, this is about cable networks uh, underestimating the sheer power and influence of services and online media such as Netflix. And I thought it was an interesting read. Because um, if you take the Nielsen rating, the uh, 
basically the Nielsen rating of Netflix. It's pretty much on par with a lot of the current cable. Excuse me, this beer is mm. burptastic. It's so good though, I can't drink, stop drinking it. You drink a fair amount of it too. It's 13%. It's 13%. 13% of deliciousness. Right. You get onto my half of the show so that Kyle doesn't have to worry about being this responsible for the beer anymore. This All right. Anyway. Um, so what I was saying is Netflix is pretty much on par as far as their Nielsen rating goes in terms of daily viewers and whatnot okay. uh, as, as like ABC, NBC, CBS. These huge, you know, megalodon uh, cable networks. Um, and they've even done Meg- some megalodon? metrics. Me- Me- megalodon? In reference to the massive shark. Oh, okay. Uh, megalodon shark. All right, all right, I think all right. megalodon is also yeah, it's, it's used some, sometimes as something a like that. gargantuan right. amount. But anyway, uh, a lot of analysis have done some analysis. And <laughs> they, <laughs> You're going off the rails. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. You're going off the rails. It's a good one. I'm on a good one. Um, th- they figured out that there's been about 10 billion hours of internet video that's been streamed off of Netflix not this year, but in the first quarter alone. Oh. 10 billion hours. I, ha- I have been increasing my, my viewership of some of the Netflix Have you? Uh, and we're going to get to that. We're gonna, I'm going to ask you and, and pick your brain about what you've been watching on Netflix later. But that's, that's a tremendous amount. That's about two hours daily per subscriber. Mm-hmm. That, that the average Netflixer that's a good amount. is watching. That's a good amount. But um, I will say every time that I've heard TV watching statistics, like the average you know person or whatever watches like four hours of TV a day, and I've always been like, really? Like I've never, I've never come close to those things that they say are like. I the know, average but amount. we are we are above average people. We are above average minds, Paul. We are not the okay. plebs that still resort to TV as their primary source of entertainment. Okay. As is the same with all of our viewers, of course, watching the uh, yes. video that we're streaming on Twitch. Of course. Oh, look, Nori's, Nori's here. Oh, the doggy. Hi there. Hi, doggy. Hi. We're, I'm, I'm getting licked. Nori's going to be Paul's dog Nori's right going to be here for the rest of your half of the show, Kyle. Did she let you pick, your, pick her up? Oh, yeah, she does. Oh. Oh, oh she's knocked my, <laughs> she knocked my microphone off. <laughs> watch, watch just like our view count just spike to like 3,000, like 1,000 viewers. Just Look, we have corgis. She's, uh, she's, I don't, Nori, know, I don't know how comfortable she is right now. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Oh, look at the camera. Kyle, Kyle? She looked me in the face. Oh, well, that's what she does. Ah, she's very cute. Very cute. Um, <laughs> someone, they're, they're posting dog pictures <laughs> in chat. Brilliant. So, moving back on task, as long as you guys aren't severely distracted from the adorable <laughs> dog that's, that's sitting on Paul's lap. Um... There's also been a survey that's been passed around by Nielsen that shows that 50% of the population, 50% of people would prefer a service like Netflix over traditional um, satellite or cable subscriptions. I certainly would. And doesn't it make sense? <laughs> Did she just close <laughs> the window? What did she just do? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Control Alt Corgi right now. Nori has minimum. No, 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 it's still there. The stream's gone. <laughs> She somehow, she somehow licked the mouse and minimized everything, though. Oh. Uh-oh. It's the best stream ever. Yes. Yes. She's having such a good time on the stream. Say, yeah. she has no idea that, like, 200, 300 people are watching I, right now. I don't think she does. She has no clue. She's maybe she, like, maybe uh, she does. Usually she knows when people are, are admiring her, and she... She's she, an attention whore. Yeah. You're an attention whore, aren't you? You're the cutest attention whore ever. Okay, so... What does this mean? It means that people are more willing to pay for an $8 subscription to watch countless amounts of content than an $80 subscription, which that is what makes, the average person makes uh, pays for a cable subscription. That makes much more sense. It does. Give me your puppy. Um, oh, oh, oh. Did we mention 4K? Did we mention that, that Netflix is already like leaning towards the possibility of 4k streaming covered in dog here now which is which is a standard that like tv networks are so far behind oh yeah they won't be ready for that sort of thing to be able to handle that kind of bandwidth for years so um, you're saying that there's some sort of sea change going on and that yes. uh, people prefer absolutely oh god sorry she's a hairy one <laughs> she's a hairy female that's the one downfall of uh having a corgi they're very shedding they're very hairy they like to shed I'm sorry, people are people are booing. 
because I took Nori out. Boo. I'm sorry. I know. She's the real star of the show. I know. Right. Um, not to mention the fact that, okay, so 4K, we got 4K support coming up with Netflix. Not to mention the fact that Netflix is gaining an audience, like, by by the day, pretty much. They're just, they're growing. They're, they're getting more and more subscribers every day. And there's been a huge loss of market share recently with the cable subscriptions, with, uh, with you know, the big networks yeah. and stuff. So it's just, like, the whole idea or aspect of cord cutting. Netflix is literally cutting the cord between the home viewer and and the source of media, the source of entertainment. So what have you been binge watching on Netflix, Kyle? I'm glad you asked. So I was actually gonna ask you all, all, all of you guys as well, as well as you, Paul. Okay. Um, what I've been binge watching on Netflix, and by the way, before I tell you, that's another benefit of Netflix over over oh, cable is, is binge watching is that you can binge watch yes. and i think that like binge watching was not a thing it didn't exist before netflix i mean as, yeah. as prevalently it did to some extent it did to some extent but, yeah. but i mean it wasn't until netflix that it was like it just got tossed around like candy it was like oh what are you binge watching oh i'm totally binge watching it's like yeah you're going to be binge watching on netflix or you're torrenting illegally which is cool too <laughs> um, but what i've been binge watching lately is bates motel Okay. It, it was something that was recommended based on other stuff that I had watched. I like suspense and thrillers and stuff like that. I mm. like TV shows. And it was recommended. Uh, my fiance and I, Heather, started watching it about two weeks ago. We we're already through season one. We're on season two. Nice. It's fascinating. Do you know, do you have any idea? You no. Know, really? We should we should go through the entire plot structure right now. We though. should just, I'll just tell you should, every you episode lay it out, synopsis. We should lay it out for people. All right. Basically, I was joking. Okay, <laughs> we shouldn't do that. A very shorthand explanation. We're out of time. Kai. Okay, you're right. You're right. I will <laughs> not. I will sorry. not uh, expand anymore. I'm just excited. It's I'm a really sorry. good show. Go ahead and watch it. Bates Motel. If you Bates haven't watched Motel. it already, what have you been binge watching on Netflix? Uh, on Netflix. What are you guys binge, uh, binge watching on Netflix? Uh, the Civil War. Type it in chat. Really? The 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 Civil War documentaries. Sounds terribly boring. No, it's fascinating. You should watch Bates um, Motel. By, by what's his face? The guy who does all the really good documentaries? Attack on Titan. Um, yeah, that's a good one. No, what? Documentary? What? Yeah, I love Come documentaries. On. Have you, I mean, you and uh, you and your wife like cooking stuff, right? Do you guys watch much cooking stuff on Netflix? Uh, like a little bit. You should watch uh, Cutthroat Chicken. No, wait. Cutthroat Kitchen. <laughs> Cutthroat Chicken. <laughs> you should, I totally you said that right. Cutthroat Chicken. <laughs> Heather says that all the time. I <laughs> let's uh, let's Ken, move on. Ken Burns. Ken Burns' Civil War documentary. Okay. There you go. All right. We have one more story. Sounds no, you, you have two more stories. <laughs> all right. Good Lord, Kyle. All right. All right. <laughs> let's move Microsoft, on to the next one. Microsoft is going to purchase AMD? Yes. No. Potentially. Potentially. No. Sources, reliable sources, but unknown sources, which seems counterintuitive, uh, say Shaker. that Microsoft might buy AMD. There's a couple of reasons for this. I okay. think the main one is that Microsoft might want access to AMD's uh, CPUs or APUs. Okay. So Microsoft has Xbox One, right? Yes. Now it's speculated that <laughs> it took you a while. That. It did. That took me a <laughs> it's speculated that for every <laughs> Xbox One that Microsoft sells, they pay AMD a hundred dollars for their SOC, for the APU. That's in the Xbox One. Mm, on the flip side of that, I've heard that AMD made a really bad deal when they signed up to provide all the hardware for the Xboxes and the PlayStation 4s and that they don't make any money on the hardware sales. How is that possible? How do they not make any money? What, why would they? That seems like that's called stealing. It's not stealing. Companies can arrange to do to do that depending on their, their okay, well, position in the, the market. I don't, I don't know what source you're, you're crediting here, but as far as the article goes, it's saying that they they project that there's about a hundred dollars spent for every Xbox One that goes to AMD okay. based on their SOC, um, their system on a chip, their APU, their CPU plus their the graphics chip and whatnot. Um, there's been about one point I'm sorry twelve point six million Xbox One sold. Okay, that equates to one point two six billion dollars that Microsoft has paid AMD for if, their chips. If this speculation is accurate. Of course, it's on the internet, Paul. Of well, course it's accurate. Clearly. Everything okay. on the internet is real. So, what a savings Microsoft would have 
if they acquired AMD and All could right, save so. over a billion a year, right? Yeah. Don't forget about Maybe. smartphones and tablets, right? I mean, they have access to all that kind of technology um, okay. with their Surface Pros and stuff. Whatever. So the, the 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 flip side to some of these rumors that I had heard, because AMD being acquired by anyone, we were talking about them maybe being acquired by Samsung a month, month or two back, yeah. is <clears throat> that this is a major market move by large companies that have lots of stock and yeah. lots of people who have invested in them. And that these rumors are only being reported on like niche hardware technology sites, like PC hardware technology sites. And if there if there were some like actual like validity to any of these rumors, that we'd be hearing about it from the major websites, like, like New York Times, Wall Street and Journal, Forbes. and other other like websites or, or publications that don't focus on PC hardware necessarily, but that focus on like business and you know all. Money. But do you think that could uh, also be potentially because these larger, more generic uh, reporters don't focus solely on these types of, you know, no. fields and whatnot? And no, because you're talking about Microsoft and AMD, and both of those companies are massive. So like you think any this major, is any major move from a buyer sales standpoint? You'd you'd start to hear stuff on other locations than just your. Now I'm not saying that there's no validity to the possibility of AMD being sold, but I'm saying that the speculation going on with Microsoft I think is pretty preliminary, uh -huh. and uh, until I hear more from it from from a wider variety of sources, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't. So I you wouldn't. think this is complete just hype and hearsay? I think it's speculation. I think somebody's like, hey, Microsoft might do this, and somebody might have put together a theory of their reasons yeah. and some motivations to do that. But excuse me. Um, but by and large, I think it's still just very in the realm of speculation and, and not actual fact or, or actually what the companies are making. I know, this suit. article from could Maximum PC, you know. I could, I, I think could uh, it, c it could be reputable. It's not even for Maximum but, PC. It's from Kit Guru. Well, that one is, but the it's one Maximum PC took the report from Kit Guru. Yeah, same thing. It's not, all the same same, thing. it's not the same. It's not like the same company. <laughs> Here's the Kit Guru. Yeah, they're article. all the same thing. But and look, they have a picture of AMD's headquarters. Clearly, they're about to be sold. But but isn't it weird, yeah. though, that there was just, like, last week on last week's show, we were talking about the potential of, like, there were rumors of AMD um, splitting? Yes, and, we like, were talking about that. So, I mean, don't you think that might be might have been a precursor to this, where, like, the two are kind of intertwined in a way, where, like, maybe that had surfaced because of rumors based on this proposal or this you know th this article possibly maybe it's all but you're gonna talk about possibly maybe rumor speculation yeah okay i don't know i think it, that's, that's i think it, it's fun it's, to it's, inter the it's interesting to, to discuss possibilities but um and lastly we have one more story from and Kyle. lastly we have one more story before we start another full-on half of the show with paul uh it's the steam pre-order it's completely sold cool. out Ooh, looks like it's a good thing somebody jumped in early to buy the you Steam did. controller. You did. Steam, uh, Steam pre-ordered Paul. Paul pre-ordered the Steam controller. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, probably, what, a week or two after they announced the pre-order opportunity. Yeah. And um, they're completely sold out now. So you no longer have access to the early release of these... Uh, products, which is the Steam Controller and Steam Link, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, those two things are completely sold out for pre-order. Interestingly enough, they started selling them. They started uh, making them available for pre-order at the beginning of June. And within the first week, uh, Steam had sold 35% of its pre-order allocation. Wow. In the first week. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty good. For an unreleased piece of hardware, that's, that's really good. Yeah. So, but, I mean, the idea is, that, like... I, I'm still not sh positive on this. Do you need the Steam controller? You don't need the Steam controller to to like set up a Steam machine, do you? Or do you, is that part? Is that like a requisite part of the the ecosystem? I'm I'm almost positive you could use a Steam machine with a keyboard and mouse. Yeah, I feel like you should. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, sorry to all you suckers who didn't buy one early like me. <laughs> but uh, I promise yeah, when I I'm get a sucker. when I get mine and everything, I'll do a video on it and all you that should. good stuff. So um. You guys curious. can live vicariously through me. Yes. But 
We're that done. is it. We're done with Kyle's half of yes, the show. Yes, sorry for the we, long-winded segment. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. We had best move on to my half of the show before Kyle passes out. Absolutely. Um, but if you're watching this in the future, go ahead and click the link in the video's description to head over to my half of the show where we'll talk about even more interesting things in technology. Even more? No, that's not true. Well, even more? I didn't say e better. Equally. Equally as good, just equally as interesting. interesting. Come on. In the meantime, though, uh, if you're watching live, we're going to take a very, very short break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Any any closing words, Kyle, for half of the show? I love you all. Kyle loves all of <laughs> you. All of you guys. Have we a good one, guys. You. We'll see you in a bit. We'll, we'll be don't right go back. anywhere. If you're watching us live, don't go anywhere.